Hi, this is Rachel from the Dotting Center. Hello and welcome to part three, the grand finale of our paint broidery video series. This project has been such a joy to share with you all. Thank you for sharing your progress with me so far. Today is the day where we can finish this painting and hang it on the wall. Now some of you show-offs have a few different color variations going and that is so fun! I love it when you're excited about a piece and it's a, just a total thrill for me when you're into it. So without further ado, let's just jump right in. Let's finish it. Now if you haven't already seen part one of this series, you're definitely going to want to check that out first. I'll link a card in the uh, top of this slide and then down in the description I'll leave a link for that video. Basically what we do is we go in depth into all the tools you'll need. We'll go into the paints that we're going to use and the special mix to get these paints to the exact consistency that we need. And we also I show off how to make a fancy blended gradient base coat using a Lazy Susan. And then the design stops at right about here after we get that center flower done. In part two, we just continue that design using big tools and big design elements. And we expand that painting out a few more petals until we get to right about here. And that's where we leave off in part two. And then now we are in part three. This is where we're going to complete the painting, add some dimension, add some color, and expand all the way out almost to the edge of the canvas. So if you're ready to complete this painting so that you can put it on your wall, go ahead, grab everything you need, and let's get started on finishing our paint broidery painting. Now just a note up front, I used all of the same colors that we used in the previous two videos, but in the end I decided to add these three colors in a, a metallic paint, just to add a little bit of a finishing touch. Now if you don't have these paints, you can use something equivalent that you do have and that would be just fine. So picking up where we left off, let's grab a small stylus tool and add three teardrop shapes in that blank empty space in between that bronze shape. Now we're going to use Brilliant Purple and this is one of my favorite colors. This is actually an opaque color so the uh, it won't darken as much as some of the other paints that we're using in this painting. It's going to maintain that super brilliant pretty lavender color. Now we're working on that outer petal. We're just going to extend that brilliant purple color uh, by placing two dots of that same color on either side of that teardrop shape. Now let's tint that purple with a little bit of that quinacridone magenta and just make it a little bit more of a reddish hue. And this is going to just extend that purple uh, a little bit more, help clean up the palette and just give you a different color variation for these next dots. And then for this last dot, let's just add some pink or another color that will make it just a little bit different in uh, just change that hue just slightly so that it's different. And we're going to place a dot with a lot of paint. So dot it twice so you have a really good amount of paint so that you can drag and extend that shape up to follow the edge of that petal.
So now we have these two empty spaces and what we're going to do is add some orange by placing an orange dot and then we're going to drag out both sides and create this little boomerang shape right in that space. We'll do it on both sides. Now, one thing that I do that might not be great for tutorials, in all honesty, is at the end of my palette, what I'll do is, if I'm starting to run out of colors, I'll start to mix them together, the ones that can mix well. And what this does is it saves on paint waste, and it also gives me variations on the colors that I'm using that... Uh, it makes it look like it's a completely new color, even though it obviously it will blend well. It'll work within the palette that I've chosen. Towards the end of the palette, I get a little creative with the colors just to save on the amount of paint that I throw away at the end of the day. Now let's take our number 13 tool and place a couple of big dots, really pull that paint into that dot and extend it up so that it fits right in between that arc and that petal. So that, do you hear this? Do you hear that puppy? Are you giving me trouble right now? That's what I thought. I should let you know that the studio, we have a guest today his name is Woody Watermelon. He is an eight week old golden doodle. And uh, yep, he is, he's probably gonna be a little bit vocal. Right now he's warming my feet. Um, but yeah, he's having a little puppy, a puppy dream and it's so cute, oh my gosh. You know how they like wag their tail and bark when they're sleeping? <laughs> Now we're gonna place a number 12 dot right in between those two shapes that we just painted. That tool fits right inside those two lines. And now we're going to grab a stylus tool and just surround that purple dot with various shades of purple and pink. Again, it's your custom mix, so whatever is left on your palette, just go ahead and make some pretty shades purple and pink, and we'll make three arced dotted lines extending out. And then we'll just fill the space at the top and bottom with some purple. Oh, now here is a sneak peek at my fancy paint wipe offinator. Basically, those are my kids' old socks with the toes cut out, and I, be, I wear it like a wristband, like a cool wristband, like, like the cool person that I am. But I can wipe off my tool on that thing in between each dot or in between each color, and it keeps my tools nice and fresh. So there's an idea you might not have thought of. So it was at this point that I decided to pull out my favorite metallic paints, and these are my two favorite brands for metallic paints. They are just lustrous, and they have just beautiful pigmentation. The colors are awesome. And, well, like I said before, that Liquitex Basics Gold is basic. It certainly is. And it just, does, it just doesn't have that shine, that pizzazzle. So this is Golden in iridescent bright gold and it is expensive I'm not gonna lie it's pricey but it's worth it and um, that's kind of like the little tiny details that you put into your painting it goes a long way and this gold really kind of shines everything up just very pretty so here what I'm doing is just going over the gold parts in the center of the flower, basically like the stamen of the flower with that 
golden brand iridescent gold and now we're going to add details to the inside of that flower so taking the number one tool the tiniest tool in the set just add tiny little dots starting from the outside of each of those blank sections so that would be your first dot in the outside and then just walk those dots like Kristen Yurick says right to the center of the flower and by the way speaking of Kristen Yurick did you see she had a new video out I'm so excited it's been a while since she had a video she did this beautiful peacock stone oh my gosh she I'd love her channel her videos just bring me to a happy place so she is how I learned dotting and that is probably the reason why we're here today. That's why I even have a channel is because I want to kind of pay back. I know what, what it means to learn a hobby that is relaxing and meditative and healing. And for that, I am forever grateful to her. And so that's part of the reason why I am here sharing this with you today. So here we're adding details to those pink petals, just adding some of that rose gold with the number nine tool. And then you want to dot that twice to get enough paint to drag it out that long all the way to the tip of the petal. Now let's take our stylus tool and just dot right over the top of those uh, magenta dots. You can see how when they dry, they just get this really deep maroon color. Um, and so we're just going to dot right over the top with that bright naphthol crimson. Now here is a still shot of where we are at this point and this is uh, where I lost some footage but I'm going to pause it here. So all you'll need to do to complete those pink petals is put some gold paint right on top of the rose gold shapes basically just making uh, swooshes and teardrops just smaller ones extending down to the edge of those petals and then that's completed so sorry sometimes i forget to hit record on that camera it's such a weird thing to have to film yourself painting so this is the part where neighbor decides to mow his lawn at eight o'clock in the morning on saturday can you guys hear that oh he must have heard my thoughts because it stopped. Whoa. Okay, so this is where I'm using a mixed purple, just a shade brighter than the color underneath it. And it's also the same shape, just a little bit smaller. Now we're adding some copper um, swoosh highlights to those shapes. Don't those look cool? kind of reminds me of like leather um what is it like punched leathers what is it called when they when they they do those cool like belts and stuff i'm gonna look that up one moment please yep that's called tooled leather so um yeah now here i'm just adding height to any dot that i think needs a little bit of bulk to it and you can do that with any of these shapes. If you want to see them pop out more, just add another layer directly on top. Or like you see here, I'm adding another, another layer that is slightly smaller than the layer underneath it. And that way you can just build up those shapes. It can be the same color or a different color. It really, it's completely up to you how thick you want those shapes to be. Now at this point, I decided to wipe off the chalk lines 
and that'll just wipe off with a damp cloth. Now I'm going to pause it here. Man, I love this power of being able to stop time. It's like, oh, it's so it's intoxicating. Not really. Anyway, looking at the painting from far away, when I see those gold dots in the center, it just says hexagon shape to me. It is, it draws your eye to that bright gold and it's distracting, I feel, from that center flower. So sometimes at the end of a painting, you can choose to just make color changes. See how it just calms that down a little bit? Now we still have those gold dots with the pink top dots. Now look what happens when I put that purple over the top of those. It just calms that section down. It brings it lower in intensity value and it just makes the center flower pop out a lot more. And I think that helped so much uh, to make this painting better. Now, at the same time, you might look at this painting at this point and think, okay, well, maybe I want to tweak the colors to go this way, or maybe I want to try this in a different color combination. It is totally up to you. And at the end of a dot painting, you can always color correct and make it your own. So what do we think? Did you enjoy this project? Because I really hope that you did. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you if you haven't already. And as always, you can visit me over at thedottingcenter.com for any dot art supply needs that you might have. And now I think the best way to end any video series is with a puppy discovering a doorstop. I think that is a, a good way to end it. So enjoy. Ah!